Good morning and happy Good Easter. Good morning, Pastor. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi, the South End site, formerly known as St. John, St. Anne, and even formerly St. Anne's. But know that you are all welcome, and we need your voices to sing and to uh, praise the risen Lord. So let us stand together. We also need your money. <laughs> <laughs> of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Creator, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, as we gather on this Easter morn, let us for a moment be aware of the goodness of God to us and how we have made use of that goodness in our daily lives, how we might make even better use of it in the Easter days ahead. And let us together now in song acknowledge the glory and the greatness that is God's. Yeah. 
Let us pray. On this most holy day, Lord God, through the triumph of your only begotten Son, you have shattered the gates of death and opened the way to everlasting life. Grant, we beg you, that we who celebrate the festival of the Lord's resurrection may rise to a new and glorious life through the quickening power of your Spirit. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Has 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, we have a reading from the Holy Gospel as recorded for us by John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and said, <clears throat> and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head 
not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't think God is going to be calling any one of us, so whosoever phone is making that little note, if you would please silence it, uh, uh, then we won't be distracted by God at this point, all right? Uh, thank you. It's like chewing gum. When somebody is chewing gum in the congregation, your eyes are attracted to them and you're distracted by that uh, gum chewing. But we don't do that here at St. John, St. Anne's, or St. Francis of Assisi. <clears throat> Earlier this week, when I was rereading the four gospel accounts of the resurrection, I have to confess that my first reaction was, where would we be without the women? We would not be here this morning if it wasn't for them and the mission that they were given in those gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. An ordination, women or men's, had absolutely nothing to do with it. They were doing what women did when it came to burying the dead. It was a woman's thing. And they were cautioned not to be alarmed and were repeatedly told not to be afraid. On finding the tomb empty where the broken body of Jesus had been laid. And then they were charged to go quickly, not to waste any time in getting the word out to Peter and those other frightened men. They were sent, they were ordered, they were ordained to proclaim good news. The good news that Christ had been raised by the Father. And the sad part of the story was that they were not believed. What did they know, those women? And it appears <clears throat> that we are still not ready to listen to what they say. Maybe if we did, as church, we would be in a far better place than where we find ourselves today in this church of Jesus Christ. Faith <clears throat> in Jesus, raised by the Father, did not come easy for those disciples. They are confused. They're full of doubts and uncertainties as they search that empty tomb. Mary of Magdalene is probably the best example of what happened to all of them. According to John's account that we just read, she goes out before dawn in the dark to search for the battered and broken body. So she goes out to the garden, to the tomb, 
and she doesn't know that death has been conquered. The empty tomb leaves her confused. Without Jesus, she feels lost. And the others search together and are challenged to look for him among the living. He is risen. So each one of us has to search for the risen Christ in the land of the living, where there is life. So where do we find the spirit of Jesus lived today? It requires some searching on our part, both individually and collectively. We need to make our own spiritual journey to seek Jesus passionately as they did with all of our energies. And we might look to the Magdalene's example. The one who is alive, who calls her by name will not be found in the midst of a stagnant, routine faith. We would do well to look for Jesus where communities place Christ at the center. And I think that here at St. Francis of Assisi St. John, St. Anne's, St. James. We do that, but we can do it even better in the days ahead. Those disciples knew that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there he will be. They still didn't do it. My dear sisters in Christ, <coughs> sisters and brothers in Christ, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to a new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we renounce Satan and all the works of evil and promise to serve God faithfully in the Holy Catholic Church. And so <clears throat> I ask, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. That's kind of weak. <laughs> you want to try that again? Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. That's better. Do you renounce the glamour of evil 
and refuse to be mastered by sin. I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord and brother, who was born of the maid Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, and is seated at the right hand of the Creator? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. <clears throat> no, we're not doing that yet. They played music at this one, too. It's covering me. Some people say that I'm all wet, but you are too. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Blame it on them. priestly people, and so we are called to intercede on behalf of the church and the world and all who seek God's love and mercy. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, will inspire renewed Easter faith and encourage Christ-based love for the poor of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That members of the church may proclaim the hope and promise of Christ's resurrection in everything we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those entrusted with leading their countries may work to bring peace to nations ravaged by war, especially in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
that all the baptized rise to new life in Jesus and joyfully proclaim the good news with their lives. We pray to the Lord. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us in this assembly may always rejoice in the Lord's resurrection and realize the salvation he won for us. We pray to the Lord. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill, whether physically or mentally, may know the healing and comforting presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died share the Lord's victory over death and live forever in the peace of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now mention by first name all those we wish to pray for.
That's God now. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, watch over your church with unfailing care that we who have received new life through the paschal mystery of Christ may come to the glory of the resurrection. And we ask that you would grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> Just a, uh, a word of information. You notice that uh, we did not pass the basket today but that doesn't mean that we don't need your offerings and your support. There is a basket in the uh, uh, back by the uh, font, so you may place your offerings in there, and we know that you will be most generous in doing so, so that we might continue the good work of St. Francis of Assisi, St. John, St. Anne, and all of the rest of the uh, saints that uh, are our patrons. So. Do we have any other good news to announce? Yes. Tuesday is Chuck Thursday. Supposed to tell us how old. Seventy-five. Oh, you're hungry. Oh. I've got ten on you. <coughs> Margaret. Edge is tomorrow. Yeah. How old is it? Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Oh. You're my elder, so I have to respect you. <laughs> uh, Lucille? Oh, well, then we're not going to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other good news? Uh, I told the people up at the, uh, the uh, Delaware Avenue site that before Mass, I was looking at the uh, vocation picture out in the uh, uh, gathering area up there, and there were probably about uh, 30 faces and not one woman. There's something wrong with that picture. <laughs> And that's fine that you applaud. But Francis, <coughs> the bishop of the church in Rome, the universal church, has called the whole church throughout the world to synodality, which is a Greek word for saying walking together. And every church, the church in Albany, the church in New York, the church in the United States, the church in uh, Europe, South and uh, <clears throat> North America, wherever the church exists, are called to come together during this year and to bring their ideas, their thoughts, and their concerns to the local churches and to make known what we need in order for us to continue in a vibrant way. And it's obvious <coughs> by that vocation picture of there not being any women that we need women to be given their rightful place in this church. They are capable and probably more than capable of roles of leadership and they have exercised that through the years. And shame on us for not recognizing that. And I was told about four years ago that I am not supposed to speak about women's ordination at Mass. So enough said. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't do your work, 10 plus years down the road, there will be no places like this or up on Delaware Avenue or wherever else you gather to worship Christ in the Catholic fold. So you have work to do as you go forward as an Easter people. And 
your local parishes are supposed to be having listening sessions so that they can gather that information and bring it to the local sessions, and there are about four of them in our diocese, and then it's our bishop's responsibility to bring our voices to Washington, and then Washington to bring our voices to Rome. And that's in October of 2023. So we have some time, but time is wasting, so get going. Any other reason to hang out before we go to breakfast or lunch or whatever? Yes? Somebody's pointing to somebody or, no? Okay. Okay, and also the musicians for their wonderful uh, music. I'm sorry? She for Gus. For Gus, yeah, for Gus and, uh, yeah. All the six, right. Yep. All right. Let us bow our heads then and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord look upon us and be gracious to us, and as we go forward, allow us to be a blessing to each other and to all those we meet, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We have celebrated Eucharist. Let us go forward to continue our good service of the Lord and all of the Lord's people.